But what's the word, y'all? On the last episode of the Kenny Beaton Podcast, we talked about some small market teams that are playing phenomenal ball. Minnesota, OKC, Sacramento, and one team that we cut for the sake of time was the Orlando Magic. Well, guess what? I got time today. And the Orlando Magic are 9-5 and five with... Let me show you this because if some of y'all might not believe it with the number one defense in basketball Yeah, sitting above Minnesota, Boston, OKC, Houston. That's not by a lot. We're talking 106.7 versus 106.8 versus 106.9 But number one is number one. You're not gonna discredit number one just because it's by a little bit. Are you? No um, now, I don't know if they're going to end up with the number one defense in all of basketball for the rest of the season. Actually, I would say that they won't. But I still feel really confident that the defense is real. Because this is not just the first 14 games of the season fluke defense. No, this dates back to the end of last year. Last year, they started off their season 6-20. and 20. Six and tw- you, you almost got to try to start off a season 6-20. and 20. They, they weren't trying to do that. And they ended the year with a very respectable 34 wins. And it's, it's super respectable when you remember that they started off 4-20. and 20. And a lot of that good basketball that they played in the second half of the season really was their defense coming together. One thing that a lot of young slash rebuilding teams struggle with is finding out what their identity is going to be. Because the front office has to figure out when we're drafting, when we've, we're at the top of the lottery every single year, are we drafted for fit? Are we drafted for identity? Are we drafted best player available? And it's a struggle for a lot of teams to kind of figure out who they are, where they are, right? And the Orlando Magic, it hasn't been super long since they've traded Nikola Vucevic, Aaron Gordon and stuff. Um, They basically have Paolo, Franz Wagner, Jalen Suggs, who were part of one draft class, and then Anthony Black. So it's like, let's say three seasons within the rebuild and they figure things out, which is cool because there's a lot of young teams playing great basketball right now. We talked about OKC Thunder. They are sitting at the fourth ring defense. And then if you look at the best offenses in basketball, the Indiana Pacers are there. Those are three of the, the bottom five. Top five youngest teams of hoops. The Orlando Magic are the fourth youngest team in ball. Fourth. And they found out that the defensive side of the ball is where they want to hang their hat. And it's it's great because it's, it's, it's real. There are a lot of things to look at this team and be excited about. But my number one thing as a guy that's a, a neutral fan here is the play of Jalen Suggs. Right, Jalen Suggs is one of the top picks in his draft class. And obviously, through the first two, two years of his career, he hasn't lived up to that draft position. But right now, he's finding himself more and more. I can't help but to look at this man play and, and be reminded of like a, a younger Marcus Smart. I know a lot of people probably see that, but I'm just saying this man plays with a crazy amount of intensity. Loose ball on the floor. I'm going after it. One thing that is so funny, though, is because a lot of people aren't normally watching Orlando Magic basketball, when they're going against your favorite team, I see so many tweets of, oh, my God, this is, must be Jalen Suggs at Super Bowl, the, the amount of passion he playing with. Nah, he just, he just plays like that every single night. And this is a team that needs a player like that, and he fits in perfectly in that role. Through the first two years of his career, he struggled with shooting the ball. But as of right now, he's shooting 35% on four and a half attempts, which is pretty good. It's around league average. And it's a team that desperately needs three-point shooting. So if Jalen Suggs can can consistently get better at this point of his game, it's just better for his career. This is a play I showed on Twitter. I have a little series on Twitter that's called uh, Jalen Suggs Moments because he's one of my favorite role players to watch. Starts off right here. As you can see, um, the Raptors did not trust anybody from behind the arc and Jalen Suggs makes them pay right there then he's matched up against a way bigger Pascal Siakam uh, an all-star player and he fronts that gets the steal and then it's a fast break opportunity for the Orlando Magic Paolo finds Franz Franz hits the three that is offense turned to defense turned to offense and Jalen Suggs just pumped up he's pumped up ladies and gentlemen and that was the moment where a lot of people were like man can he chill out the answer is no he also reminds me of, of Marcus Smart because one thing about the Marcus Smart era in Boston is that when the clutch moments were happening somehow the ball always found Marcus Smart and I'm, I'm getting that same energy from Jalen Suggs. Even this year alone, the ball found him for a game with an opportunity that he missed. Last year against my Chicago Bulls, the ball found him for a game with an opportunity and he made it. Yeah, he, beat, he, he, he made it. But that's just the player he is. One thing that is impressive about them maintaining the number one defense in basketball and winning basketball games is they're missing two starters. There's no Wendell Carter. He's only played about five games. Same thing with Markel Fultz. Only played about five games. And they found people to slide into those spots to maintain it, right? Last night against the Toronto Raptors, Golga Batazzi looked like a combination of Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid. Without the, without the scoring. Without the scoring. And how is that possible? His passing was elite. 
like Nikola Jokic, and he was rim protecting as if he was Joel Embiid. It made no sense. Goga has been a guy that I've watched a good amount when he was in Orlando, I mean, when he was in Indiana, didn't really see a bunch of this. <laughs> and he's been able to slide into that starting spot and be uh, really good. And Anthony Black is a rookie. And though he doesn't get a ton of touches or a ton of opportunities, he doesn't make a ton of mistakes in that role. And I think that goes a very long way for a roster like this. One of the most interesting signings uh, last year where I was like, what the heck? We're seeing Joe Ingles end up in Orlando because it happened so early. And this is such a young team. That I was like, okay, what is the role of Joe Ingles on this young roster? Well, he adds veteran leadership. He adds three-point shooting, which is struggling right now. He ain't hitting the same amount of shots or the same uh, percentage of shots as last year, but also adds another ball handler. I want to remind people just a few years ago, he was one of the, the best pick-and-roll players in hoops, specifically with Rudy Gobert. I'm not just bringing Rudy Gobert into the conversation again, but with Rudy Gobert and Joe Ingles, that pick-and-roll was elite a couple years ago. So you're seeing some of that playmaking show itself now, especially with them missing like Markel Fultz and other players. My preseason pick for most improved player was Franz Wagner. And him and Paolo Bencaro haven't, I wouldn't say struggled out the gate, but neither of them have hit the next step. A lot of us see progression is linear. Oh, they were really good last year, so they must be really, really good this year. And that's just not always the way it works. Again, we're only talking about the first 14 games of the season. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, Paolo play better and better every single night, so I still feel pretty good about him. But they've been able to maintain being a really solid team without their star play players turning into all-star players, at least at this time. And I always say, if you can play good to elite level defense, you're going to find yourself in a lot of games. And that's what we're seeing from the Orlando Magic. The one bad side is that the offense is still not very good. And they haven't played against a ton of really good defenses yet either. So um, them having an offensive rating that is 24th in the league might, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be, we've been talking about how good they've been. I don't want to turn the coin. But it hasn't been very good. Now, the one thing about their offense is that a lot of it, a lot of the success is really fueled by defense. They cause the most amount of turnovers in ball and their transition O is elite. But if you slow them down, if you're an opponent and you tell your team, we're not turning the ball over today, we're going to try our best to not to turn the ball over today, you can kind of out-scheme the Orlando Magic because if you slow them down, Ugh. Here are the worst um, half-court offenses in basketball. As you can see, the Orlando Magic are sitting at 27th in half-court O. Uh, luckily for them, they get a bunch of offensive rebounds and, and so on, and they run a bunch. That's why I have them 14th around league average um, in number of plays in a half-court. But again, slowing the game down for them is probably going to put them uh, make them struggle for sure. But again, with them being such a young team and them still going towards their rebuild, this is something you want to see fixed, obviously, but it's not that much of a problem at this time because them being a top team in the league is not something that a lot of people expect for them right now. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. There are some, some offensive-oriented guards slash wings currently on the market that I would at least pick up the phone and call about. That's that. I'm not saying the names. I'm just saying that there are some offensive oriented guards that might be available and Orlando might be a team that should be calling. Cool story for them is seeing John Isaac play more and more minutes every single game. And the, the how he flies around the court is so incredible. I got to watch it here twice when they played against the Chicago Bulls this week. He was absolutely everywhere. So, so good that some of these games are even like somewhat closed out with him at the five because he was all over the place so that's a good story after years and years of him uh, not being a part of the team basically one thing I would like to see more is that right now on a very low volume Paolo Bencaro shooting 40% from three I would love to see him take more three-point attempts because again we're talking about year two and as a former number one overall pick they're looking at you to potentially be the main building block of this entire team and I think if you can expand your range to be more of just a mid-range killer slash get into the basket and become a threat from the outside it just opens up the game not just for yourself but for the other four people on the court for you because right now the Orlando Magic no matter what lineup they put together has negative spacing so if you as one of the lead guys can turn into a really good three-point shooter then that would just improve everything right now Franz is struggling from three but he has over the last couple years been relatively league average so let's say Jalen Suggs is now league average Palos 42% is maybe not 42%, but gets his volume up a little bit more and, and Franz gets back to his normal self. Then we start to add some of that spacing. And then when Wendell Carter ever comes back, I don't think he can shoot much worse than what he shot in those first five games. So I'm, I'm optimistic about things, but also I have to be a realist and say that the, the offense probably would never come around to be one of the top in the league with this current group. But I, I'm just optimistic, I guess. I don't know. You let me know what you think about the Orlando Magic. You feel me? The Orlando Magic. Go watch them play against the Denver Nuggets. And maybe they run the Denver Nuggets out the gym. 
it's, I guess it's a, it's a pos, it's a it's a possibility. I just watched Goga clamp up some other people. Maybe he could do the same thing with Yoke. No, he can't.